everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV getting my first look at the new reflection front living fifth wheel. And I, I, right off the, I gotta say, this might be the best executed front living room I've ever seen in a mid profile. The, you, you ever notice how front living rooms exist only in like the giant solitude Montana like size things? It's because the curvature that front roof makes it difficult. They overcame that here better than anyone I've ever seen to date. Now, if there's a good one out there I haven't seen, leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll try to put it on my hit list. But I, what's crazy about this, given the size of this, the four slides, it is only just over 11,000 pounds for something this size. That's crazy. That's like the weight of a triple slide fifth wheel here on a longer quad slide. I don't know how they managed to pull off that Wiccan voodoo magic, but they did something pretty great here. Of course, we got the hot cold camping package, the tire pressure monitoring. Um, with that big uh, 12 volt fridge that we're looking at, you have 370 watts of standard factory solar up there with a, a pretty hefty charge controller, of course, to be able to handle all of that. That is terrific. I love seeing more manufacturers bulk up their solar, and it's really critical on this floor plan because the way that that um, refrigerator is set up, you really can't swap shit it out for something like a gas electric two-way because it doesn't vent the same way. So this one is really actually, we're starting to see RVs built around the concept of um, 12 volt refrigerators almost exclusively, which is uh, very interesting to me, very cool. I was also really surprised a lot of front living rooms have two things for front storage capacity. They have jack and squat, and this one does not suck. Um, it's got a couple little hiccups and hangups that I've seen, but I mean, other than the fact like it has two-stage travel access for the goals it's looking to accomplish, this is, uh, this thing is on point. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you appreciate the content we bring you, hit that subscribe button. Let's get in there. Now, as you may have noticed when we were outside, I am in a live display today. This is not like a traditional RV show. This is the annual RV manufacturer's open house, kind of like an RV show for dealers where we get to see all the new stuff. Um, thankfully, with all the good window coverage on the campsite of this one, I can give you a good showcase of the display grounds here. The uh, the flip side of that is we might uh, enjoy the company of a couple unexpected guests from who knows where later in this video. But we're just going to keep on keeping on Joe Dirt style because life's a garden. Dig it, brother. And we're going to roll. Now, one of the things I said is I think this is one of the best front living room fifth wheels I've ever seen in a mid-profile RV. And the thing is, when you start getting... Uh, clarity and definition of like, you know, kitchen versus living room versus something else. Sometimes things get a little wacky. They get a little wonky. And uh, along with that, uh, a lot of times these things feel like chopped up little rooms when you start dividing them. But they did an amazing job of making every room look and feel large and expansive um, w without feeling like everything is all kind of condensed down too much. Now, one of the reasons a lot of mid-profile fifth wheels have never done a good front living room is because they always try to push that slide all the way up front. If you notice, they added more extra space here. This actually has, I don't know how well it appears on camera, but it has a very deep, expansive front living room design. And by moving that back, the slides away from the curvature, what they did is they allowed you to get taller slide outs. The other thing here, where they extended it also, they made sure that when the hide beds are open, you can still open the theater seating over here, which is very, very cool. That's the kind of extra little detail work that uh, it just takes, you know, some, some pretty serious paying attention, basically. Now, obviously, we got that theater seat right across from Boardwalk and Park Place right there. That is heat and massage, and it is cuddle compliant, as we'll get to see. But as long as we're standing here, let's take a look at all the different features and functions in this front living room. You know, you got your pivoting TV, you have storage, of course, you have the blackout roller shades, you have, um, you know, the dual hide beds that, uh, it's one of the other really cool things about front living room fifth wheels is you can, um, use them like an alternative temporary bunkhouse because you have sleeping for like multiple big adults or big kids. So let me throw this idea at you. If your goal was like, I, you know, you need an RV right now, but in a couple years, the kid's going to move out and uh, you want that like luxury retirement rig, get something like this because the kid can make their own hide a bed at night if they don't just end up sleeping on the floor, which by the way, did you notice how much room was past the hide a bed beside the bed? Like it, that could be an awesome like dog space. And although you're doing the sideways scooch, you could slide your way between there. I was also really happy with the overall headroom up here. I only started to bonk my head 
Uh, when we got up to the, um, you know, the front curvature area, which I, I think is just to kind of be expected. Now, uh, again, you've got all kinds of great campsite window coverage. I really appreciate the detail work they did, though, adding things like the extra little windows up front there. And opening these pockets up, making them shelves, I think is great. Sliding past that uh, TCL Roku Smart TV. Get down here where they got some handy decorations. I'm willing to bet those are just the photos that came uh, with the frame, but hey, cute family nonetheless. You do have household and USB outlets on both sides of these as well. Um, now that electric space heat and fireplace, I had to turn it off. It's like 40 degrees outside and I was sweating to the oldies like Richard Simmons over here. Did you notice, by the way, blackout roller shades on all this stuff? Oh, I can't believe I didn't lead with this on the inside now that we're here. Last year, the number one thing I heard all the time, on reflection especially, was how many shades of HOA approved brown do they have in these things? And my answer to that was all, all of them. them. They had all of the browns. Now it's still obviously in the, the brown tone family, but it's like a nice light sandy tan. It doesn't feel kind of like dark and oppressive to me. Personally, I like it. I am real happy with what we're seeing here. Now, another thing here, these, um, it, they've got, you know, a dining slide, but the kitchen itself is not sliding. And one of the things that I like about that is, is when you do that, you actually create way more counter space. You create way more storage. I'm not a fan uh, necessarily of kitchens being in the slides of, oh, I'm bumping my, uh, my arm over here. Sorry about that. But um, I totally lost my train of thought when I lost my camera focus there. That's interesting. I just kind of keyed in the fact you have a TV hookup down here. So you could actually have like upstairs, downstairs entertainment, game day, bucket, go boom. Now, Reflection's done this for a while where you've got that big rain sensoring max air vent fan up top. But, um, oh yeah, since this is not in a slide, you don't have to break it up. You don't have to condense and squish it down and you end up with way, way, way more storage. Now, speaking of other things you can do, um, they have gone with the 12 volt DC compressor fridge. That's like a big 16 cubic foot Furion version. One of the nice things about that, because they don't have to like exhaust it through the roof, they can actually install it on the interior wall of an RV like this. And what that can also create is that extra sort of, um, you know, dog leg left is sort of walk-in pantry, but a, a lot of extra storage space in there. Not to mention again, the primary kitchen itself, you might need a two or three step stool to get to all this stuff, but holy crap, Martha, it's got a ton of storage. And I love the, uh, um, LED inlay underneath the uh, the countertop line as well. Now over here in the dining area, you've got what I lovingly refer to as the Franken table, where you've got a pair of chairs, you know, all the time, but you have a removable floating bench and ottoman. And I do believe regular viewer, I believe it's actually screen name Spider the Nimble, will be very happy to see no plaid in this decor anymore. That was something uh, they were always commenting on. They just, they couldn't stand the plaid color patterns that were in some of these. Well, obviously they've addressed that, they've removed it. And this is one of the first um, times that I've seen them go carpetless in a situation like this. And it seems like that's something that Grand Design is slowly working through. Like uh, their big luxury fifth wheels have been carpetless for a little while, but I can see it now starting to trickle through. I was talking with the uh, the, the fellow who manages um, the Imagine product earlier today, and uh, we were talking about that. And he says, you know, uh, and let me ask you folks, let me get this feedback back to him, even though this is a reflection while we look at the storage under the sink right there. A carpetless slide isn't as easy as just pulling the carpet. There's some other things that are required to make that happen. Would you be willing to spend, say, roughly an extra $200 to have carpetless slides in Grand Design Imagine travel trailers or even transcends, you know, at their budget point? Leave me a little comment. Let me know. Now, that cabinet right there, that's going to be your primary linen space. But look at the headroom of this thing. This is made for the power forward for the Chicago Bulls. That's who this shower is made for because it's all on the lower deck. But you might notice you got this big boxy thing over here in the corner. We'll get back to that when we get into the bedroom in just a second. Now, we're going to see the slides closed in road mode, so stay tuned. But I do believe that door is going to be really critical when you want to get to your bedroom and especially your bathroom in transit. Um, you might have noticed everything is all sliding pocket doors as well. 
Uh, we've got the uh, uh, dual 15,000 BTU air conditioners outfitted on this guy right there. Again, the lighter color palette really opening everything up in here. And you have your choice between a king or a queen. Now, in a lot of my videos, you've seen me do king beds in RVs and say, well, it's easy to swap down to a queen. And, and it is, truly. But in this RV, I like the idea of bringing it in stock with the queen bed because queen bed gives us side stands that the king bed does not. Now, if a manufacturer includes the side stands on a queen, I like to see a queen. If they don't, I like to see a king. That's kind of the way I look at that, but I'd be kind of curious to know, you know, what do you what, what do you think? What What's the right bed in here? Would you go king? Would you go queen? You know, do you like the extra walk around space or do you like the extra elbow room so you're not, you know, belly checking one another at night or anything like that? Um, and they, you know, they had to get creative because they didn't want to, this is already long. They didn't want to extend it any further. They had to be careful with where they put, you know, the storage. A full rear wall closet would just extend things out a little bit too far. TV hookups right over there uh, across from the bed. And you'll see, uh, let's actually open that up right there. You can see that that is going to be the, the bulkier primary hanging storage with some good dresser space below it. Of course, we have storage down here below the bed as well. But notice, like, above the bed, they actually strutted the holdbacks. It's so frustrating to me how many manufacturers have the, the, the head knocker dropper um, you know, cabinet style doors above their beds. It's those extra details, that quality of life stuff I see in this that I really like. Now, this over here can either be closet space or that's where you could put your washer dryer stuff. But of course, you'll always have uh, some dresser space below. I like to take a chance to close up the slides for road mode, but I do believe we have some guests and I don't want to pinch everybody off and squish them down. There we go. Giving our guests some time to conduct their business and hop themselves out of here. I am... Um actually very for something this size with the front living room like you walk right in the door and i i mean there's there's nothing stopping you from from getting around here freddie mercury who's always saying don't stop me now he would be very happy with this thing but you walk around the corner i don't know that you're going to be able to get to the freezer because of the slide fascia but the refrigerator door that's not a problem the pantry we can get to that stuff but once again for the nap and crap accessibility, you're gonna have to go through door number two. So when we slide from the right and slide to the left and then freeze and everybody clap your hands, we get over here. <laughs> stupid, stupid music references that I have. Anyway, you get over here. The bathroom obviously is just straight in the door. We hook our way left a little bit. You can get over here to the, uh, the bedroom as well. So in terms of the travel stop function for a front living room, it's about as good as I've ever seen. Now, interestingly, I actually want to start back here because I think this is one of the things that they've done better than just about anybody. When you have a big slide sticking off the door side like that, just like you see right here, you lose a chunk of it because of the awning. But you actually are creating, in a way, a more private space back here due to the fact that this does include a second power awning. And it's those key clutch details, you know? The fact that you've got the, the double stable steps. Um, just above that orange little flower right there, you see that white thing hanging down? That is a gas grill propane cooker hooker, my friends. In case you feel like sitting under the awning in the privacy of your space, cooking something, making the neighbors jealous with the tasty smells, all that kind of stuff, you can do so back here under an awning. Enclosed, forced air heated, radiant barrier, uh, tank heaters on reflections. Also, that's one of the uh, main differences there between, say, like an, a reflection and an imagine. They go a little further there. Similarly, they both have Goodyear uh, endurance radials, you know, rated for 87 miles per hour. But uh, these have factory standard tire pressure monitoring, which is very cool. And here's a nice little kind of up close and personal look at one of those um, more ride suspension shackles that they brought out. Funny story, that blue might look a little familiar to you. That's Jayco Blue. Years ago, Jayco was one of the first manufacturers to bring Moride into the RV industry. And uh, they wanted Moride's parts to match their Jayco RV, so they gave them their blue paint code. And then Moride just kept using it. <laughs> so you see Jayco Blue on other RVs all over the place. Now, uh, you're actually getting to see right through the belly of the beast here. And this is one of the things I was saying. Um, a front living room fifth wheel does not normally have a good size front pass-through. But remember how I said they extended everything in the upper deck? 
that created the extra room for those sorts of details right there. Um, uh, of course, you know, push button automatic leveling. And real quick, let's talk towing. 11,000 pounds is crazy light for something this size. However, it is long and it has about 2,300 pounds of hitch weight. Uh, I don't know that you'd be disappointed carrying this with a one ton. I don't think you need to necessarily go dually, but uh, if you're going through crosswind country, I don't know that you'd dislike that kind of extra stability. Notice the new nose cap and the new color palette on the outside of reflection. Um, just kind of lightening and brightening things up, going, I think, right along hand in hand with the lightening and brightening that they've done on the inside of the RV. So some nice kind of consistency of thought patterns right there. Then, uh, of course, getting to the other side of the pass-through, you've got that enclosed uh, protected docking center right there. That is one of those things that is helping them uh, achieve those good weather ratings. And then as we slide our way back through, this is something they did really well. Remember the kitchens in the middle? You don't see uh, drains over here. Actually, hold on, let me swing over. You do have your like freshwater like dump valve right there, but notice how there's very little in the way of slide outs over here on the driver's side of the RV. And we do have a single sewer outlet over here. Apologies for the uh, wonky camera work. I was trying not to step over somebody right behind me right there. They managed to plumb everything together, probably because the kitchen and the bathroom are close to one another, but you don't have to go crawling under slides to grab your pole valves. Just the, again, nailing all those little like daily use feature function details. It, there's so many times I see manufacturers like, well, that's how the engineer drew it up. That doesn't mean that's how it should be built and that's not how they're doing it right here. They still have that 3,000 pound factory towing package on the back of this, along with the safety chain hooks and the four-way wiring harness, which, you know, it's kind of like, you know, licking your fingers, sticking in a light socket. It's a shocking experience. <laughs> Get ourselves up on that ladder, take a look at the roof there. You may have noticed as I scanned up real quick, this does have a, uh, a factory installed backup camera on that. That's one of the other interesting standard features. Um, there are certainly, Plenty of things that help define uh, a reflection differently from an Imagine, but that is yet another one of those like, uh, you know, key clutch differentiating detail factors. And like I said, is there something else in a mid-profile fifth wheel uh, with a good front living room that I haven't seen? Have I missed something? Like, uh, you know, the awning space, the way they nailed that awning space, the expanded living room area. The, this thing's a contender. Frankly, it, it Every other mid-profile front living I've ever seen always feels, for lack of a flowery way to say it, a jerked over big fifth wheel front living where everything, it was uh, sacrificed and scrunched down. I don't feel like you're making sacrifices here. I feel like you're getting exactly what you want without sacrificing for this kind of money. That's what I want. I don't want to be making sacrifices for that kind of money. That sucks. Speaking of money, um, we are not able to publish anything but MSRP on our website for pricing on these nor am I able to answer specific pricing questions in the comments section due to their uh, advertising guidelines that they hold their dealers to. I really do apologize for that, I wanted to let you know. If you check our website, you can see if we have one in stock, our people can let you know what one runs, but we can't do it on a public national platform. It's just their rules and we're gonna abide by them. But until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.